Hello and welcome to this HOG4 tutorial which will give a brief overview of the new features in the version 2.0 and 2.1 software. Please note the following important information regarding show file compatibility. A version 2 show file is not compatible with a console running an earlier software version or a HOG3 console running version 3.2.6. Similarly, any show file backup created on a console running version 2 can only be expanded on a console running version 2.0 or later. However, version 2 can still run show files created on earlier versions of both HOG3 and HOG4 software. It is now possible for the console to request thumbnail previews of digital media content stored on CITP enabled media servers when connected to the FixtureNet port. The HOG4 can also connect to Catalyst media servers and the thumbnails are presented in the new Media Picker window. The Media Picker can be opened by holding down Open and pressing the Media Picker soft key, or by pressing Pig, Open and Beam. The Media Picker is a tabbed window allowing you to view and select slotted function values such as colours, gobos, prisms and media for the selected fixtures. This window is searchable, making it a very powerful tool when dealing with large numbers of media thumbnails. Good content management is important to make the most of this search facility. The DMX output window can now be directly edited to manually set a value for a given DMX address. Just select a cell or drag over a group of cells and press the set key. DMX addresses can also be set to ArtNet values streaming from an external source such as another console. To revert back to HogNet control, Reselect the DMX channels and press the Set to Hognet Input button. It is now possible to create palettes that contain only timing information. For example, you can now create an intensity palette with timing information only without storing any intensity values. This means complex timings can be stored independently and quickly applied to any other intensity palettes or hard values. Several new features have been added to the effects engine. When building table effects, it is now possible to specify the begin and end real world values of the effect. For example, you can specify your fixtures to tilt within the range of minus 20 degrees to 45 degrees. You can also specify exactly the value the effect will start from. Please note that if the base value of the effect is changed, the begin and end values will also be adjusted accordingly. Also, when the begin and end values are changed, the base value is automatically generated by the console. Direction and bounce fields have now also been added to the table editor. Effects can be set to either run forwards, backwards, or by using the bounce option, effects will run forwards, then backwards. Effect rate can now be crossfaded in the way that size has always done. An effect rate of zero is now also supported, meaning a circle effect, for example, can crossfade from 40 BPM to zero BPM without moving off its path. This also allows the fixtures to be stationary without releasing the effect. Any running effects within the list and scene directories are now shown by a turquoise bar in the bottom of the directory item. When the list or scene is on stage, but no effect is running, the bar is shown in dark blue. The cue list and scene option of action of halt when halted can now be set to toggle effects. This means that when the chosen cue list is not actively crossfading, when halt is pressed, all of its running effects will pause, effectively having a zero rate. Pressing the halt key again will restore the effect rate. A master effect size option has been added to the cue list and scene option windows. This works in exactly the same way as the master effect rate in that the size can be scaled for all the effects running in the cue list or scene. By holding the choose key, the master effect size can be adjusted quickly using the third encoder wheel. Within the user preferences window, a tab for recording options has been added. 
This allows the operator to set which soft keys are pressed by default when using record, update, merge and delete. A second tab has been added for configuring the default master and main playback preferences for cue lists and scenes. When changing these default options, it is also possible to apply these changes to existing cue lists and scenes. In spreadsheets such as the output and patch windows, new buttons have been added to the right hand side of each aggregated section, allowing for faster hiding, showing and adjustment of priority for each section. Fixtures can also be quickly displayed in reverse order. In version 2.0, the kind masking scheme has been changed to be subtractive, meaning that when pressing record, merge or update, all kinds are highlighted in the masking menu and they can be deselected to mask them out. In version 2.1.1, there is now the option to set the default kind masking scheme to be either additive, like it was prior to version 2.0, or subtractive. Holding down the pig key whilst pressing record or merge will reverse the chosen masking scheme from whatever is currently selected in the user preferences under the recording tab. Additive or subtractive masking is indicated next to the mode of the function keys. Changes have also been made to the kind masking menu in version 2.1.1. Only kinds which have function values in the active editor are selectable. All other kinds are displayed as flat buttons which are not selectable, making it clearer which kinds are able to be masked. Whether additive or subtractive masking is used, when all the kinds in the masking menu are deselected, all parameters in the active editor are recorded. There are several other new features in the version 2 software releases, including support for the brand new Hedgehog 4 console. For a full list, please visit the support section of the High End Systems website and view the release notes. As new versions of the software are regularly released, please remember that release notes for previous versions of the software can be found in the archive section. To upgrade to version 2 software from any version 1 release, you will need to perform a full system restore. If you are unsure about how to do this, please refer to tutorial 15. In the next tutorial, we will look at the changes to masking that were made in version 2.1.1. Thank you for watching.